I'm like, okay, girl, it's time to go. Let's see who is gonna answer better. Of course, this is the month I actually get pregnant. I want to avoid those moments, which I will regret later. When the leaves fall down on the trees. When the leaves fall down on the trees? No. What do you mean no? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do whatever you want, whatever you think is right for you, bye. She completely stops to cry. Try it. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to another chit chat video with me. I'm doing today a little Q&A on the topic of motherhood. It's a question that's been asked by my followers on Instagram. I honestly wanted to answer them there, but me and Allegra, we both got really sick this weekend. We we're like out of it. We were sleeping, we we're relaxing, we we're like like taking our time to recover and I basically did not answer any of the questions I'm trying to fix the camera okay so welcome to coffee chit chat with me without a coffee because I'm filming this video at 4 p.m. so I'm like you know what I'm gonna do it without a coffee in Allegra's room because Allegra is downstairs uh, she's still not at school but I think tomorrow I'm like taking her to school I'm like okay girl it's time to go because to focus with her at home it's like the hardest hardest task of the day because she's constantly calling me so if you see her screaming in the background she's fine she just wants my attention anyway guys let's dive in into our questions and just talk about all about the beauty and the fun of motherhood right let's go okay so I honestly just freestyle the questions and of course when we're filming our talking videos there will be a gardener with a leaf blower I honestly need to find out their schedule and like understand when I shouldn't be filming those videos okay I think I'll start from this question which is how long did it take you to get pregnant with Allegra I get a lot of questions and that specific topic and I choose a lot of times not to answer them just because I feel like sometimes people maybe try to get pregnant and compare honestly like each body is so different and I think that success of pregnancy connected to so many things like diet like stress level you know of course if you don't have like any sicknesses or preconditions or complications if you like went and check and everything is fine for some people it takes some time to get pregnant just because because of a lot of circumstances that we live in and deal with. For me, it happened fairly quickly. I got pregnant probably in three months. We did really try. On the month that I got pregnant, it was actually the month that I was like, okay, we're going to New York. Let's not really try. I want to drink tequila. Like, I want to have fun. Of course, this is the month I actually got pregnant. So I <laughs> do think one of the main things is, of course, being relaxed and don't stress out about that specific thing on top of all the life stress that you have but also like don't let it get to you and compare someone else timing of pregnancy with your own like I have friends who was trying to get pregnant for one and a half year and still got pregnant and had healthy babies and healthy pregnancies some happened really from the first trial so it really depends but I do think that it's you know whenever if you try for it like do it with the intention like go do the blood work don't do all the tests but ovulation test just to understand when your ovulation is uh, there is also great tracking apps uh, that I use I use clue where you can track your period your ovulation and it's pretty clear and it also sends you notifications so really great I have a little visitor right here she decided that she wants to come here and be with us I also picked prepare the questions because when I started to film I was like oh shit I did not chose the particular question but now I do so we're not gonna waste time Okay, you want to answer the questions together with me? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, let's see who is going to answer better, okay? I mean, Allegra, your hairstyle is the best. I love it. Okay, first question. You ready for the first question? Yeah. Does it happen that you yell at Allegra? No. No? <laughs> oh, my love. I, of course, try not to, but we are all humans. And as any other loving mom, <sighs> sometimes happens that this little tiny cute bundle of joy is on my nerves and I am sometimes raise my voice to an extent that I wouldn't like to raise and I do believe that it's all about coming back to those moments talk through and apologize the beauty of kids that they are forgetting things quickly and they're 
give you and you're still the best mom for them but of course I want to avoid those moments which I will regret later but to answer your question yes I do it's pretty natural to every mom we're all humans but as I said it's all about fixing those moments coming back to it talking it through I also feel like I mean from my own childhood my mom was raising her voice and yelling at me too sometimes and I do think that those imperfect moments that you have in your own childhood later on when you become a mom gives you a great relief and understanding that nobody's perfect and it's okay not to be that perfect Pinterest mom that never screams and never have a mess and of course I love my mom so so much and I think she's one of the best moms so this concept of my mom actually raising her voice sometimes and have we having those moments and she's still a perfect mom for me gives you more confidence to me to accept those emotions and go through them in a healthy way and I'm not like beating myself up for that so I hope I answered your question next one screen time for kids okay do we we have a screen time? Yeah. Yeah. How often do we have screen time? When the leaves fall down on the trees. When the leaves fall down on the trees? On the street? No, I think you didn't understand the question. The question was, do I let you watch TV? Multic. No. What do you mean no? Yeah. Yeah. How often do I let you watch Multic? Um, evening. Every evening? Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course, become, before I became a mom, I was that type of mom that said, I'm never gonna give my child TV, I'm never gonna give my child iPad. And of course, as soon as I became a mom, everything went out of a window and I do give her screen time. I am trying to limit it and try to have rules for her and for myself because it is sometimes tempting to turn this TV on. And you know, especially when you have a busy day and you don't have maybe nanny or help and she's sick, she can't go to school and you're like, ah, I would rather turn the TV on and just do my task in a peaceful, quiet way. It is a great tool for parents to have those moments and to have this help, but I do try to limit it. We have a rule in the family that she watches TV only in the evening. Sometimes when she comes back from school at like three, four o'clock and I can see she's really, really tired and like she can't be active anymore. And I know she has a ballet as well at 4.30. Sometimes I put her on the couch and I turn TV on for one hour and I feel like it's her like relaxation time, you know, but overall I think we're trying to limit it to one hour a day sometimes sometimes <laughs> sometimes I like you wanna watch the whole long movie and it becomes hour and a half especially on the weekends but honestly I don't try to demonize the TV I grew up watching TV I came out just fine with a couple of issues but still functioning regarding iPad iPhone this I'm trying to uh, not to implement too much we use iPhone or iPad only when we travel. I'm on it. Quiet. If you want to be here, you're quiet. Okay. So I'm trying to use it only when we travel, especially like in an airplane or in the long road trips. So the iPad is helper on road trips, and she knows that. So she doesn't really ask me for iPad during time when she's at home. But we have an issue because our dad is really into screen time, and he doesn't know how to limit screen time for himself. So <laughs> fun story. One day I. Had had a job on the weekend and I left Valeria with Allegra and it's one of those moments when things went unplanned and Nanny couldn't come and like he agreed on that he like took off from work as well and a lot of things and I literally left house and I was like do whatever you want whatever you think is right for you bye like I'm not gonna Daddy. even interfere <laughs> see and guess what they did they watched TV not kidding maybe for six Mama, hours this is just mommy this is just a picture just a picture oh I think this is a video Okay, Shh. so they literally watch TV for six hours. So sometimes we have those moments too, okay? So those moments are exception, but they are sometimes in our life, right? Mm -hmm. Next question. Say next question. Picky, picky. Let's talk how to deal with mom guilt. I'm putting my whole, but still something feels not right. Such a familiar feeling. So I think that it's one of these things that are built on us to always feel like we're not doing enough, to always worry, to always feel like we should do more. I think it's a very natural feeling to have. I struggled a lot, especially when she was little, to like go away from home, to leave her alone. Even if I'm like home, she's with a nanny and I have to complete some tasks in another room. I always felt very like unsettling feeling, very hard to focus. And a lot of my friends, 
friends that I know experience the same exact feeling and I do think it's something that turns on in your brain when you become a mom to always worry, to always feel like you have to be there, to always feel like you're not doing enough. I do feel like from a moment she went to school, so I do feel like when she went to school, things kind of change. I feel a little bit more relaxed when she goes to school. A, like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it feels like all other parents take their kids there. So you don't feel that guilty because you're not the only one. You feel like there's a lot more parents are on the same boat with you. And also, you know, plus the school feels like they, you know, whenever she comes back from school, like she's always so happy. She has very positive emotions. She learned things. So I do feel like things getting a little bit easier and the mom guilt, you know, of taking those times for yourself for work or for yourself, like just, you know, just to take care of yourself gets a little easier and better when they're going to school. So I waited until Allegra was two and a half for her to go to school. It felt right at that moment. Honestly, on a ch child number two, I might do it even earlier. <laughs> tips on how to validate your daughter when she's upset you do an excellent job well thank you of course it's a learning process and i don't feel like i'm there yet of like really dealing it in the right way but i do try to inform myself with certain you know i have uh, instagram accounts that i follow of like different kids psychologists that are giving some suggestions of how the best way to deal with tantrums or you know or moments like this and just for myself like i always you know i think that little people are like big people like us so I always ask myself which kind of support I would want in that specific situation what I would love to hear from my mom or from my friend in that specific situation when I feel this way whatever you feel like you would like to get it will be always the best move but unfortunately sometimes in that like emotions when you are like the kid having a tantrum and like so upset sometimes you're getting irritated too especially if you're tired or didn't sleep enough so it's quite hard to like look from outside and do a right step and the right move but i always try to make her feel like i hear where she's coming from i hear her problem and um you know i also feel like it helps a lot in some situations when she gets upset about something and i can see she's not mature enough to understand her own feelings i often say like oh i know exactly how you feel like i used to get upset about the same thing when i was a kid too and she it's funny how it works but that specific sentences when you say that you felt exactly the same when you were a kid it's something triggers in their brain that she completely stops to cry and she's like oh really you felt the same way when you were a kid because sometimes it's hard for them to connect with you because they feel like you're an adult and they're kids and they feel not understood but the moment you tell her that you remember how you felt in this specific moment when you were a kid you'll get a different reaction try it <laughs> Okay, let's ask, answer next fun question together. Ready? Do you limit sweets for Allegra? Yeah. Yeah? Good job. How many sweets can we have a day? One. One. Not really. We do uh, usually two. Oh my God, I feel like I have so much dust on my camera. Do you see it, guys? <laughs> when the heat light hits. Okay, so when do we usually have sweets? When we eat. After the food, right? Yeah, after the food. Do we have sweets in the morning? Yeah. No. So we have sweets sometimes after lunch, right? I pack in your lunchbox. What do I usually pack in your lunch lunchbox? Chocolate? Chocolate. Bunnies. Yeah. Chocolate bunnies. I buy these little biscuits that are like healthy-ish <laughs> biscuits that I pack for her lunchbox. That's usually for sweets after after lunch. And then in the, after dinner, she usually likes to have either vegan chocolate ice cream or she also likes to have lollipops or gummy bears. I honestly try to keep healthy sweets at home, but I'm not one of these crazy moms that order like healthy vegan cakes for birthdays. When she's at the birthday party, I don't limit her. If she wants to eat all the sweets she wants to eat, I let her do that. You know, during Halloween, like she eats a lot of sweets. I, today I was like, okay, this has been a week. It's about time to get rid of all the candies because <laughs> it's starting to get too much. But I want to, her to experience this like childhood 
who thinks as well of eating too much sweets doing all the stuff we did as kids and I also think that if you're limiting your child too much and making these decisions for them to be too healthy and cutting all the things for them and controlling them so they don't eat those unhealthy things on the birthday parties I believe you also will create a very unhealthy relationship with food for them for the rest of their life so I would not recommend that of course you know everything has to be in moderation and as I said 80% of the time 90% of the time when she eats home she eats healthy but those 20 you know 20 times that she eats outside or birthday party or whatever if she eats you know yesterday she had like a green lollipop that god knows where coming from or like the day before yesterday she had mmm and uh snickers so i just let her be honestly <laughs> that nut and chocolate mmm is this nut and chocolate did you like it oh yeah oh yeah mm. What is the greatest thing you learn being a mother? That's a good one for one of the last questions. I mean, motherhood teaches you so many things, but I think one of the greatest ones is you will always be loved. And like, as I said, no matter what happens in your day, how you behave in the end, like they just love you so unconditionally and accept you the way you are, which is absolutely beautiful. Also, I learned, oh, you're blowing kisses to people. That's sweet. Also, I learned that kids teaching you patience and you will discover patience you don't have. Like I'm generally not patient person at all, but when it comes to my daughter and especially my husband, I discovered the patience I never thought I have. Right, sweetie? And also coming back to the last question, you learned that as a mom, you never feel like you're doing enough. So definitely motherhood pushes you to do more and better, right? Okay, another question. Do you feel that you have lost some of your use by being a young mom? Mother. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly don't feel like I lost specifically use. I mean, yes, I do have a couple of wrinkles here and there, but I don't feel like I changed in spirit. Like I still want to want to do these fun things, especially like I thought it's going to change with my husband. You know, like we will become this like boring married couple, but honestly, like we still want to mm. We still want to do those fun things. We still want to go out. Not as often as we used to, just because the thought of waking up the next day at like 8 a.m. and being tired and exhausted always kills the vibe. But I do feel like I have the same spirit. The only thing is like you definitely mature more after you become a mom. You become more responsible because you are not responsible only for yourself anymore. You're also responsible for the little human. So definitely you mature a lot and even in relationship like in marriage you know we used to fight about like little things now when you become a mom you like as I said your patience you're running out of patience like your nerves are like just so exhausted and like I close my eyes on a lot of little you know fights that I would usually initiate I guess you become just wiser and you understand that it's not worth sometimes to spend your time and energy on little problems that all of us have in life Okay, guys, so I guess let's wrap up this q and I hope you had fun listening to it. I hope you enjoy watching this video because we definitely enjoy filming it. Right, sweetie? Yeah. Did you love filming the Q&A? Yeah. Will you film more Q&A? Yeah. You know, maybe we should do one cooking video with you because you are such a good cooker. What do you think? Yeah. Okay guys, we are off to cooking class. Elsie is ready for her cooking class. So we are leaving right now with tons of kisses. Mm, 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 mm. Wow, I love those million kisses. I just love those million kisses. Oh. Okay guys, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> ciao, see ciao.